Hey, Levi Allen here. And last week I got asked a question from Alyssa and she was wondering how I go about the process of capturing my interviews. And so I wrote a blog post about the process I go through for pre-production and actually conducting the interviews. Uh, but this week I'm gonna create a video just showing how I approach the editing process. How I take these full length, you know, half hour interviews and cut them up to get the audio bits that I need. So this is sort of just a basic tutorial the same principles apply to all editing platforms, but we're gonna be looking at Premiere today. Okay, so here's my project in Premiere. Uh, I got a sequence here. The audio is already synced up, and so this is something that I did before. This isn't a tutorial on how to sync up your audio. Right here I have the full clip just dropped into a sequence, and so I just dropped it right in, you know, the entire thing, uh, and it's right there. Usually, uh, when I'm editing an interview, I wanna get the audio just of them talking, and so, when I'm playing through, I'm trying to cut out all the good bits of them uh, when they're answering my questions. And so I'll start to play through. And one of the techniques I use right away when I'm playing through is I'll double press L in Premiere. And what that does is that speeds it up. And so that way, when you know it's me asking a question, I can get through that section faster uh, to where they start answering the actual question. And this is key because when you have a half hour interview, it takes a long time to cut the whole thing. And so you wanna get through the sections of asking the questions as fast as possible and just get to the good stuff of them answering. And so here I am, I'm approaching, I know the first bit of this clip was uh, just me setting up audio and testing levels. So I'm gonna jump in a little bit uh, and I'm gonna hit play and just start checking this out. Cool. Yeah. So you applied, got accepted, and in the months leading up, what did that feel like? Okay, so I just, I just asked a question, so I'm gonna cut right after I asked a question. I remember that first phone call getting accepted answer. and just like running downstairs and being super excited about it. <laughs> and like, Mom, guess what? And then just the not so I just sped it up a little bit so I can get to the end of her. <laughs> okay, so there she's done answering the question. And so I, uh, I already know what that answer was. And so I know that I like it. And so what I do as I'm going through here, I start chopping out the bits of her answering my questions. And the ones that I really like, I bring them up to the second layer there, or the second video track. And so that way, uh, as I go through here, all the bits that are, you know, really good, I can take those and add them to the top. I'll start to go through and uh, I'll do this to the entire sequence and the whole time, uh, fast forwarding through the sections of me talking and then slowing back down so I can hear their answers. Uh, when I've done this to three different interviews, this is kind of what it looks like. I would actually select all those clips now. Uh, and then you could just copy those into a new timeline and then close those gaps and you have all the perfect parts uh, from the interviews. That's how I get the main bits. And I'm gonna come back to that, but first I'm gonna talk about what I do when I'm you know, removing ums or ahs or what have you. And so usually I'll show the interview subject for the first little bit of them talking, especially if it's at the beginning of the film, because you wanna introduce the, the individual that's sharing. But uh, once they've started talking, then I'll usually start rolling B-roll over top to you know, show what she's talking about or show what the subject, the subject is talking about rather. At this point, it works really great to cut out the ums and ahs and just speech imperfections or things like that. And it works because there's video rolling over top so you don't see those jumps. And so how I go about doing that is you know, I'll zoom in here, pressing, pressing the plus key. That first phone call getting accepted and just like running downstairs and being super excited about it. And being like, mom, guess what? and then just preparing for it and not knowing what to expect. And so that and then, I didn't really like that and so I'm gonna cut that out. And so I can see on the audio form there, that's where it is. And so I'm actually just gonna chop that section right out and bring it back together and then check how that sounds. You're like, Mom, guess what? Just preparing for it. Just preparing for it and not knowing what to expect. Uh, getting that first letter in the mail with a packing list in it. There's another gap there that's a little long. And then just not knowing, like, I have to buy hiking boots and a sleeping bag. And then going to buy that stuff and just the anticipation of, I've never done anything like this before. There's another gap. What's going to happen before? What's going to happen? <laughs> okay, and so I'm just going through that very quick. And, you know, sometimes you do want to leave a natural pause, you know, just like as if someone's speaking. When you've done a chop like that, sometimes the audio doesn't stay consistent. So what I like to do is go to my effects and find constant gain. And so what that does, it's a transition on the audio and it just kind of keeps the level so you can't hear the, the jump as well and it kind of merges them together better. So I'll 
So that way when you hear it. Just preparing for it and not knowing what. So that way you don't hear like a pop or a click as you sometimes do when you do a little cut like that. So I'll, I'll add that to the. In it, just not knowing. Everywhere that I do a cut. Okay, so that's how I, you know, remove ums and ahs. And so, I mean, that's, it's really basic what I, the way I go about it. And once I've pulled out all my favorite parts, as I'm showing here, you know, and I've, you know, copied those over to a new sequence, what I then start to do is piecing it together by what they're talking about. I like to color code different interviews in my pieces. And so, you know, for this first lady, I, I color coded it green. And then the next girl, I color coded it blue. And then the next one, I color coded it, um, it's called Rose. <laughs> and so that way, when I start cutting it all together and I group uh, the audio bits of what they're talking about, uh, together in the same areas, you know, so this person's talking about one thing and you group those all together uh, in these little sections throughout my timeline. And since they're color coded, I can see sort of a spectrum of do I have an overview from the three different subjects or another way that I do it once I get them divided into their separate subjects is I'll actually color code the subjects. And so I know, okay, this stuff's talking about action. Okay, this stuff's talking about emotion. And so that's kind of just the way I go about organizing that. And once I lay that out in a timeline, that's when I start adding my B-roll over top. I kind of start rearranging things and I create these little mini story bits that I try to test out and see, man, can we make this a key part of the story that's happening here? And if I like it, then we'll keep it. And if there's good B-roll to match it, then you know we're starting to build something that I like. And so you make these little micro blocks throughout your piece and you can kind of drag those around. And so obviously I'm talking about you know this sort of style of filmmaking, like a micro documentary type thing. So you know this obviously doesn't, uh, apply to every medium of filmmaking but you know if you're shooting interviews and you're trying to tell a story through that way and um, these are just some of the tricks that I've learned that have really helped me out if you have any questions uh, please feel free to ask in the comments of this video or you can connect with me on Facebook uh, another thing that you can do is I have an email list and what I do is I send out free tutorials and free newsletters packed with value every Thursday and so I'm creating new content directly for you guys every Thursday and so you can actually jump on board to receive those and when you start receiving those, you can actually reply directly to me by email. And I will get every single one of your emails and I will read all of them. And so this way you can ask me questions directly and I really appreciate this because I want to be answering questions that actually help you. Okay, so that's it for this week's tutorial. I hope it, I hope it helps you out guys. And uh, I would really appreciate it if you shared this with a friend. Okay, take care and have a great day.